we, we've, talk, we've heard about the aha for uh, science, we've heard about the haha for humor, and I'd like to add the la la to, um, to music, which is um, a simple idea. Instruments which can surprise us. Instruments which can, um, instead of merely being a means of expression, be a means of introspection as well, and perhaps provide a foundation for some kind of inspiration. Um, when Herbie Hancock was here the other night, he had a sequencer, which is what I'm going to lead to at the end of, of this for A Day in the Life, because what I, what I ended up with was a piece of music in a sequencer, which is essentially a tapeless studio. It has many advantages over tape, which he touched on, um, and they're really remarkable tools, but they're not the only tool for working with music. Uh, Harry mentioned that I uh, work for an organization, or I, I manage an organization called the MIDI Manufacturers Association. Just to let you know what that is, that is a worldwide consortium of all the manufacturers that make synthesizers and other kinds of electronic instruments. We got together a few years ago and said, if we could have one way to communicate between instruments, and between computers, which at that time was the future, um, wouldn't it change things? And the way music is being made has changed forever because of one simple idea, which is a universal form of communicating. Um, Ted Nelson touched on the fact that the future is perhaps locked away from us because of too much diversity. Now, diversity is important because it develops better things. Uh, competition is important. But you can compete at certain levels and not compete at other levels. And even more magical things can happen when there's a certain kind of cooperation. For example, well, let me show you another program. This is a program which you play music into it, and it improvises back at you in your style. You play rhythms into it, you play notes into it, and it just starts to gush. Uh, and what I've done is I've played a few notes into it, and um, what's going to come back, I'm going to sort of recognize, but I've never heard this before. I can operate it from here. Don't need the computer. No keyboard skills here. And it's computing as it goes along. Thank you for stopping. OK. Um, what, what was the computer do, doing just then? It was giving me ideas. Sometimes it does something wonderful. Sometimes it does forget it. Um, but you can do things very fast, which I think is very important for inspiration. Inspiration happens like that, and then it's gone. Um, what this does, what this system does, is it provides me with a means to get ideas. By the way, I think this would be the ultimate kind of word processor, where it says, hey, that was good, but <laughs> what about this? <laughs> Somebody asked Aaron Copeland um, if he waited for inspiration. And his reply was, yes, I wait for it every day. Um, meaning that you have to push through uh, something as small as inspiration, because inspiration is the, it's the tiny vessel that, that starts you on your journey. And then, uh, then comes the perspiration. Sequencers are, are wonderful uh, assistants in, in the perspiration process. Um, they don't do anything unexpected. Um, they don't surprise you, unless, of course, they, they crash when you didn't save, which actually isn't that big a surprise anymore. Um, and uh, assists in getting from point A to point B as, as quickly and unfettered as possible, and that's, that's really the notion of, of a sequencer. The piece took me a very short period of time to write. Um, there are several musicians playing with me on this Macintosh. I had somebody come and play a keyboard part. The trumpet parts were played by a friend of mine who plays an electronic valve instrument. It looks like a trumpet, but it uh, is a generator of MIDI data. Um, you'll hear a friend of mine singing, which I did through sampling. Um, and I did everything else. And I, I, uh, did the piece. And you know, just as a last thing about communication, technology 
is a means of communicating. And within the arts and within music, there are so many ways to communicate. And what I'm very excited by is the notion that there are systems which allow musicians to communicate more readily um, and more effectually. Uh, there's a system called PAN, the, per the Performing Artists Network. It's a worldwide network for musicians to exchange information. I, I was having a horrible problem with one of the instruments of my large desktop uh, music production system here um, that I just couldn't figure out. And I put an, a notice on PAN, and a, a friend of mine, a, who I've never met before in France, had the same problem, told me what it was. And that took, I happened to have logged on twice that day, and it took about four hours. And I wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing today if it wasn't for him. And I'm thankful to him and our link for that. Uh, a good friend of mine who did the arrangement for the uh, opening of the Seoul Olympics um, faxed the parts for the musicians just a few hours before the event took place. Just enough time for that dress, that, that rehearsal, and boom, wouldn't have been possible. So there's wonderful things happening to let people communicate uh, through arts. The computer has not become a transmissions means for entertainment uh, of, for music yet. People still use other things, records, CDs, what have you. Um, that, that will probably change as time goes on from what I'm getting from people in this room, which is, is terrific. But right now, it is the, the quintessential tool for us to do our work and to collaborate with wonderful people like Rick Smolin, who, um, this, is, this has been wonderful. And I'm gonna hand the mic over to Rick, who's gonna say a few things, and then we're gonna simultaneously push some buttons. And uh, who knows? So um, thank you, and here's Rick. Thanks. I think it was Nicholas who mentioned that um, when your average mere mortal was put in front of two television sets, one with stereo sound and one with normal sound. They thought the picture looked better. Well, thanks to Jeff, I think these pictures are going to look a lot better with, the, with his music in the background. I, I have to tell you that um, as somebody who produces lavish coffee table books, I've been somewhat skeptical of this sort of digital or analog, whatever it's called, this, this disc uh, photography because most of the images that I've seen, particularly when you print them out, um, even the, s the smallest quality has not been very impressive to me. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting just to kind of play with this, but I really considered it a toy. I got in here this morning at 6.30 and ran this thing. And don't ask me why, but for some reason, 40 foot high, these images look better than when you print them out on paper, two inches high. I, I, I'm completely stunned by what I saw. Sometimes you can tell who the uh, objects of affection or animosity are by the number of pictures that were taken and what was done to the people in the photographs. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Richard and Harry and Bill. And uh, oddly enough, Tom Riley was one of the most tortured people um, in this slideshow. So let's uh, push a few buttons. Let me push a button here and see if I can get the screen up. Yep. And uh, I'll start about 15 seconds after you do. If we could bring all the lights down here up front. <laughs> 